There we go. Digital communications, in a poll, recent poll, consumers said that they expect opt-in rates, you know, and this is consumers, not telemarketers. Consumers said they expect opt-in is, an opt-in is required for all messages received. Now, if you're like me, you're receiving a lot of telemarketing spam texts, basically, and they're just robo dials and that kind of thing. Um, and you probably don't think that an opt-in is required in order to get that. But however, 63% consumers think that they must have opted in <laughs> in order to get that, or it must be illegal. 92% said information in business communications is often most likely not useful and would really 43% would really like to specify the messaging frequency. I know I called AT&T and asked them to stop all the spam texts that I was getting, which also ended up um, stopping some of the people that I know that send me um, automated text messages through like style sheet or um, through um, prime or through my post office, getting those texts and that kind of stuff. So it's not, it's, it's, it's a great way to clear out the phone, but I did stop some people. Okay, TCPA compliance, Telephone Consumer Protection Act of 1991 went into effect and it was done by a Senator uh, Fritz Hollings who brought it to the floor. And he stated that calls are the scourge a modern civilization. Now you got to remember what it was like in 1991. He said they wake us up in the morning, they interrupt our dinner at night, they force the sick and elderly out of bed to answer the daggum phone, they hound us until we want to rip the telephone right out of the wall. Well, wasn't he eloquent in bringing this to the uh, Senate floor? These calls are a nuisance and an invasion of our privacy. 1991, let's look at what 1991, and this law is still in effect today. <laughs> Back in 1991, our cell phones, uh, I'm sorry, 3% of Americans had or owned a cell phone. They relied exclusively, 90%, on landlines. And number of text, text messages sent back in 1991, zero. And if you think about other ways of communication through phone, fax machines used expensive thermal paper, cell phones cost, if you had a cell phone, it cost uh, per call and that cost was really high. And auto dialers were used for random or sequential dialing to call every number in a specific area code. In other words, uh, auto dialers would just call um, 100101001002, you know, the last four digits, and it just kept going and going like that. However, today, 95% of us own cell phones, and there are still 45% of Americans that have landlines. I find that amazing. That's probably a lot of businesses too. Um, but there are trillions of text messages sent. Internet faxing makes transmitting and receiving faxes efficient and considerably less expensive. Uh, you have unlimited data, talk, and your SMS, your messaging plans saturate the markets. We all have good SMS plans. We don't worry about each SMS message costing us another penny. Auto dialers get numbers from groomed and scrubbed call lists to ensure government compliance and optimization of a call center agent. In other words, our automated dialers are no longer just every phone number available. We actually get lists and groom them and scrub them. So the, just going back to the government, government re regulates who you can call, text or fax, how you can call, text or fax, what you can call, I don't understand the what, text or fax, <laughs> and when you can call, text and fax, or call and text, no fax, when you can call and text. I guess you can fax any time of the day. The do not call list, the DNC is the do not call 
registry. Um, within the do not call registry, there are three types of organizations or functions, and that would be the seller, a telemarketer service provider, or an exempt organization. A seller may also be a telemarketer if it's calling on its own behalf or if it retails one or more telemarketing places, place calls for it. Um, but you as a, an investor want to register as a seller. And I have to say, I did not find anywhere that you register for a, a seller. I'm going to stop. I'm going to change my share here. No, new share. Um, However, I found this site um, where you can um, hire a telemarketer to do your telephone calls for you and do your out calls for you if you send them the list. And this is like um, just you know one of the many that are out there. <clears throat> Moving back on, uh, that did not work, did it? You guys are not seeing the PowerPoint anymore, right? And uh, you share, try that again. We are. We okay. can see it. Oh, yeah, can see it. my green line what turned turquoise. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. Okay, telephone service registry, I think it is, TSR. It's illegal for a telemarketer to, none of these things you're going to do, ask for cash, a money order, all that kind of stuff. You're not going to ask um, your receiver of a call um, to pay by giving you a pin from a crack cash card. You're not going to ask any of these kind of things. So really, none of these things apply to us. Um, you're not going to ask for a bank account or anything like that. So all that fraudulent kind of talking that's against the law, none of us are going to do. Your automated telephone dialing systems, I'm going to get show you a little bit of that. Um, originally, an ATDS, Automated Telephone Dialing System, was defined as anything that can generate or store phone numbers, which included cell phones. But it was later determined that that was way too broad of a definition. So just last year, the Supreme Court adopted a narrower um, auto dialer definition. The ruling determined that it order to be classified as an automated dialer, it must be able to generate random or sequential numbers. So now it goes back to the old way of the 1991 kind of calling and said, okay, in order to be determined to be an auto dialer, it must be doing the random or the generated sequential numbers, which if you're doing a list, that's not it. So it's okay to do a list. Um, using your scrubbed list now, uh, you don't use an automated dialer. Uh, you do not use pre-recorded or, 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 well, I know a lot of people that do, use uh, pre-recorded uh, messages without first obtaining the prior express consent of the call recipients. <clears throat> um, so there are, there, I know there's real estate investors that are using voice messages. Um, enable process, uh, you still must enable processes for customers to easily opt out, and that's key. So you have to have a system that will allow them to opt out of that phone call. Press nine to be taken off the list kind of thing. Continue to maintain an internal DNC, your do not call list for all customers who have opted out. So you need a good um, program to handle that. So using your scrub list, scrub your calls list against the national state DNC list. Yeah, 
I don't know if you're going to do that. Um, it, has anybody tried that? Getting the DNC list? There's only like 200 million on it. So <laughs> 221 million. Um, comply with the time of day restrictions for the area you're calling. That's 8 o'clock to 9, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Provide caller ID in all messages. You know, you have to have your phone number on it. Do not send communications containing false or misleading messages. Um, and do not use ringless voicemails or text messages for cold marketing. However, however, these are a great option for follow-up sequences with prior express written con uh, consent. So basically it's hamstringed us as telemarketers and ringless voicemail and text messages. But if you're not using a list that is made up, this is what the National Do Not Call Registry looks like, by the way. To get more information, you go to telemarketing.donotcall, in case you guys wanted to see that, I doubt if you do. Not gov. Dot gov, yeah. <laughs> um we get, I get tons of uh, unsolicited text messaging. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do too. I've got them on my Airbnb in Florida. Uh-huh. You know, and, from... and I get tons of phone calls. Like, so I don't think people pay attention to that rule at all. I don't think so either. And I, and I, really <laughs> don't, and I don't know what the, um, the fine. I guess those people don't know it's illegal. No, I they don't... know it's illegal. The thing is, it's, it's very something. hard. It's very hard to report them because as soon as you tell them, don't call me anymore, they hang up on you and then they call back using a different phone number the next yeah. day because they generate random fake phone numbers right. to show up right. on your caller ID. Right. <laughs> so, and that's really true. Um, you, I know that my Google phone, like if I want to call using my Google phone number, it says it's going to use a different number. I'm like, why? You know, why does it do that? I'm like, am I not paying enough for it? I'm not paying enough <laughs> <laughs> to use my own phone number, my own Google phone. Um, so anyways, I was talking about uh, earlier before we got started about um, creating your list to do this kind of thing. And Kevin and Saffron mentioned that they are doing um, nods. Let me turn this off. Uh, nods meaning uh, notice of default, which means pre foreclosure list. And I'm going to show, and I'm getting mine from Western Title. And the way I like to use them, I, I like the PDFs, but basically, if you take the Excel spreadsheet, and this is an example of this Excel spreadsheet, uh, I'm going to share a screen. This is just one week of nods um, here recently. And the and um, the, the thing about pre-foreclosure, so you see here the default dates. Uh, are in the 20, 2020, 2022 uh, filing date of the of the nod notice of default are much more recent. And since these are trustee for pre-foreclosures, uh, you notice I have the the final judgment amount highlighted in yellow. <laughs> That's the part I want to know, um, is that it will be six months from these filing dates out before the foreclosure will happen. So you have a lot of time to try to get a hold of these people. And- does your title company send this to you already in Excel format? Yeah, I get it PDF and Excel. Interesting. PDF. Yeah. And then and then I am not marketing. I myself and am not marketing to nods or to pre-foreclosures currently because I'm so busy with my probates. Um that but if I were, I would have I would have turned this, you know, eight person list, I would be adding every week onto the same list, you know, kind of thing, or I would have several pages of them and B 
be mailing out or doing something. I'd have something automated, phone calls. Let's see, there's phone calls in here. Probably not, but you have mailing address uh, and trustee and attorneys and that kind of stuff. So what you then do, and I know Kevin and Saffron already know this, is then what I do is like take Okay, let's see, we got Brian Corey here. So then I'm going to, um, I will quit sharing here for a second and open up IDI Core. Okay, stop share. And IDI Core is who I get my, um, my, uh, skip tracing software through. I'll share that here. I will say I only send mailing or try to get a hold of the owners of ones that aren't so far gone that getting them, that there, there's some meat on the bone for everybody. Yeah, and since I'm talking about telecommunications. If they, own a, if they own, own a bunch of money on this house or something and it's just like, wow, what can I, what can I offer them? <laughs> you know, what can I offer them? Yeah, if um, if there's if the if there's, the, it's if, like forget yeah. it. Yeah, if they owe so close to what the bloody thing's worth. Um. Yeah. If they not knowing if, what condition. If there's no equity in it, it's not worth going after it, right? Right. No and unless, yeah, because you're gonna have, and if you're trying to buy from a a pre foreclosure list from the individual they're going to want to be paid off that default amount at least. And so if you're saying I could pay off the default amount and then make payments on the rest, you know, do a um, a, a subject to kind of thing after you pay it off. I can see you talking, but I can't hear you, Kevin. Oh. I no. said a subject to. Yes. Yeah, no, I heard you. yes, you were helping me put words in, but I couldn't hear you. <laughs> okay, so I'm I'm sharing my IDI core here. So the top number na one name on this, and I haven't tried it on that list, was Cor uh, last name Corey, first name Brian, and then there's an address, and I'm just going to put in the zip code uh, of nine seven four seven seven Springfield, right, and see if we can get a phone number. And you can see right here, um, there's this phone number is like just yesterday last seen. So it's a pretty good phone number mm -hmm. uh, to try and text him, you know, and because I was, you know, promoting texting and you can see the address that is the same address on the nod. Uh, and it, an interesting thing is like you can click on the house, one of the house icons and learn more about the house. Uh, total value, total value per the county is 312. And on that list, I'm going to, I'll tell you what it is without flipping back. I'll tell you what they're looking for at a judgment amount of 145,000. So market, uh, assessed market value is 312. So it might be something to work, work on. And, and then I like clicking on little stuff like this business affiliations, see what he's into. And then I have to scroll down. Blue Boy 83 LLC. <laughs> yeah, rooming and boarding houses. Interesting. Okay. So I do like I do like to use IDI Corey, so how fast it works and that kind of stuff. And I might might someday get my IDI core rep on and show that. Another thing I'm going to show since I have it right here is this um, Lane County. Now these these only go up for one month for your uh, foreclosure real estate list. And here's the list. And they're like I said, they're only one month out from the date of foreclosure because these people have a six month right of redemption. Let's see if I can make that larger for you. Uh, how can I make it larger? Hmm. Clueless. Clueless. Don't know how to make it larger for you. 
It's yeah. down on, on the right hand side. Of the oh, page. Thank you. yeah. There we go. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, so coming up 1122. Oh, that's today. So you can see that today's list, today's auctions, uh, credit bid means it went back to the attorney or the uh, it didn't sell, basically, it didn't sell. Um, and then next week, on next Tuesday, there's three up that are coming. Um, and then the following week, there's one. And this particular one, you have seen Kevin and Saffron, I know. This is in the area of my flip on yeah. 16th Street. And, and I've looked into it because it's okay I'm, I'm gonna... no, it's so somebody i know has title has bought the redemption rights for it oh yeah somebody that i have done dealings with in the past has bought the redemption rights so they opposed it adam um his name is damon I actually have it right here. That's not Adam. He's out there buying up all the redemption rights. It, uh, it's the he has it as Durable Investments LLC out of Portland, um, and and he has. I'm gonna I'm gonna quit sharing so you can see. Um, if you can see this, it's a a bargain and sale. Mm. Need in which. For $2,500, he's bought the redemption rights on this. It's a two-story farmhouse looking near Main Street uh, and 16th. Um, and it, the guy's name is, uh, I know it's Damon. You know what, it's not on this, but I had to look up the company name to find out um, his name. And it's somebody, I, I actually bought a, a a house, a foreclosure house that he did all of this on in. Um, so what, did he just sell you the redemption rights for a higher price? On the on the one that I bought, he actually went through the foreclosure and then I bought it from him. Oh, I see. Kind of like a wholesale, but not really. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, this house was a probate too. I think, I think Safi and I drove by this one time when we were looking at it and we talked to the neighbors, but I've yeah, I could be wrong. Uh, let me pull it up. Is it? It's it was a two-story farmhouse looking thing. Two-story farmhouse, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the one I'm thinking of. If you look at okay. enough houses, you tend to make a lot. Hmm. Okay, the address is two five seven sixteenth or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm copying it. <laughs> Here's reason I, I went through IDI core on that one though, if it's the one I'm thinking of and couldn't find anybody. Anybody. It was like, oh, wow. Really? Yeah, but don't know. Okay. Does that look kind of familiar there? Is that one there? Oh no, that's not the one he's thinking of. Oh yeah. No. No. Well. And you could and this is so recent, this picture that the notices are on the window there. It's August of 22. Hmm. Yeah. I don't that think that's the one he's thinking of. Mm. But, Kevin. Maybe not. I, I told Saffron like a month ago, I sent you guys information to contact those yellow houses from that. Yeah, <laughs> yellow houses. Because that is probate. And so I sent, I emailed you guys the probate. Um, yes, I looked at it. Oh, uh, didn't call him, huh? No, I mean, we were thinking of maybe we would just go by and talk to the guy because we already had a relationship with him when we were flipping yeah. that house right next door. But who knows if he even lives there because he was the, the guy that we talked to was the brother of the owner and the wife lived there too, but she never came out and met us. So 
the, the brother was more friendly than the actual owner who died. But the probate, the person in charge of the assets is like a woman that lives in Portland. Oh, so it's not the wife, but the wife inherited, I thought. Well, I it's, it's in probate, so nobody's inherited. Oh, I see. It's still in yeah. probate. Yeah. 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 And it's a mess, I think. Well, we should we should get together and look at that sometime. Yes, we should. <laughs> we really should. <laughs> get and get the that stuff leveled out of there and swept That's away. That'd be a flip of land. Just get it to be land and let some somebody turn it into apartments or something. Oh yeah, there's plenty yeah. of room there for it. Yeah, like five lots. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, any any questions, Anne, Mickey, you, Kevin, Saffron, anything you guys want to talk about? I'll just, I'll, have, you been use, have you been using the SMS on a regular basis with your lists? No. Okay. That's I what I'm curious I, about. I, so I, I have, um, yeah, I need to employ somebody to do that, basically. So I'm I looking see. at employing one of my mentors or mentees, my mentees to do some yeah. reading out like that kind of stuff. And that would be key. Um, I, I can say that, um, I'm having a lot of success with probate lists, um, and I and I had uh, yesterday the opportunity to go into contract on a mobile manufactured home in a park in Cottage Grove, but I didn't know anybody I could sell it to because in a park you can't get a hard money loan for the fix up and the home. So I, I turned it over to Dan Gandy, and he's going to see about getting it listed then. Mm -hmm. for her and uh dan gandy he's still a sharp sharp cookie we yes seen, he is <laughs> we haven't seen him in a while but he's sharp sharp and fast <laughs> he's, he's busy fast. with those two babies <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah um so yeah the woman told i told jeanette and i went down to see her um because back when i was hooking up the the appointment Jeanette was still looking for something but now Jeanette's uh in um contract to buy a duplex in Myrtle 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 Beach Myrtle really Myrtle wow. Creek yeah Myrtle Creek Myrtle Beach I don't know Myrtle Creek yeah yeah Myrtle, oh. Point. Myrtle Point Myrtle Point I don't know I'm Myrtle <laughs> <laughs> somebody named Myrtle yeah somebody named Myrtle and they got a town yeah uh, so not much, not, you know, you guys are old hats at this and that kind of thing. So um, I, I think that um, getting somebody to do my texting for me, I've got four flips going on. There's no way I have time to do that. But I was um, testing it a few months ago and I was using my Google and then I would just like um, create a text message that would go, that I could just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. Yeah. Thing and just put the person's first name in there, kind of thing. Yeah, and well, that's Wayne what... Wymore. Wayne Wymore uh, offered to do follow-ups. Maybe you should call him. If see if he would around. do it. What do you know? What happened to him? He he left the club. Oh, he's is he not a member? Yeah, I think he's, he's still a member. He I think he just re quit. Oh uh, really? Well, I have his contact information if you want yeah, to talk. I, yeah. Um, <laughs> another. <laughs> And a person who does do that, you know, that's how Yen's got that deal on. on did he? Oh, with SMS? Yes, he did. Fantastic. So from, from driving around like he does with deal uh, DoorDash yeah. and that kind of stuff, he's taken down addresses. Then he goes back to the office, looks up the phone numbers, um, and then he was SMSing. And he's the one that actually, like months ago, told me it's the best way, the best mm -hmm. way get a hold of people he's and done then I, a lot of research on it too and then i started researching on it just to do this program but yeah yeah well good good all right well happy thanksgiving <laughs> Ann and mickey i'm glad you're here welcome i ha we haven't met yet but i hope we do well thank you I, say that again I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Mickey's working on my flip at 3031 U Street. If you want to see another flip. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. 3031 U Street. It needs a lot of work. He's doing a lot of demoing right now. Thanks, Anne. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. Yeah. Demo and trash pickup. Uh, <laughs> demo and trash. Yeah, the the twenty foot drop box is already full. Now There's got, always a lot of that. <laughs> we gotta wait for Santa Pack to give us a clean. We get a thirty yard dumpster full of trees and blackberry vines at our flip we're working on right now. So yeah, because you had you had room for a thirty foot dumpster. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of room there. There there's actually two places we could have had it parked. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. All right. I think we're ready to go, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All a lot. right. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.